If you or someone you know has had an organ transplant, you know how grateful they are for the gift of life, but that that new life can come with a lot of challenges, including the medication they have to take for the rest of their lives. And now one local surgeon has performed the first ever retroactive stem cell transplant following a kidney transplant, potentially freeing his patients of the bonds of dangerous drugs forever. It's the first go around. Along with breakfast, Bill Gallio's morning routine involves almost 30 pills a day, a painful reminder of a beautiful gift from his daughter. This is for, for my stomach because of the steroids. His daughter, Timory, donated her kidney to her father in 2004, his second transplant after his first one gave out. The organ saved his life, but the drug cocktail that followed has serious side effects and weakens his immune system. It makes your life 100% as opposed to being 50% because the other 50% of your life is your medication. These are people that have had their transplant months or years earlier. Dr. Jeffrey Veal has transplanted more than 2,000 kidneys. And while he's saved countless lives, he often worries about the quality of life afterwards. These drugs have side effects. They make you weight gain, lose hair, uh, worse cancer, infections. Dr. Veal has embarked on a seven-year journey along with his team at UCLA to find a way to get transplant recipients off the immunosuppressant drugs. Our cameras are there as he transplants stem cells into the recipient's body after the initial kidney transplant. The patients, Micah Deaver and his brother Dylan, who gave Micah a kidney 13 months earlier. Dr. Veal hoping Dylan's stem cells will be a magic elixir in Micah's body, tricking it into thinking Dylan's kidney is his own, spurring his body to produce more of Dylan's cells and freeing Micah of the anti-rejection medications. A kidney transplant typically functions for about 15, maybe 20 years if you're lucky, but these same drugs actually cause the kidney transplant to fail. It kind of chokes out the kidney over time. So by not being on these drugs, the kidney transplant could potentially function for the rest of the recipient's life. And that frees up the organs for people who need it, right? Exactly. So 20% of people on the waiting list are waiting for their second, third, or fourth kidney transplant. Even before the dialysis, I was sick for years. Like, I don't want to get out of bed sick. We were mostly just caught up with all of his, like, making sure he would live. You know, like, that was not even a forethought in our mind of, like, what's the next step in life. Dr. Veal has transplanted stem cells at the same time as the kidney on half a dozen other matches, but this is the first time in history the procedure will be done retroactively. If it works, it will revolutionize medicine. Did you have doors slammed in your face initially? Yeah, definitely. But you oh, always me. believed that you would be able to yeah. do it. Uh, I thought it would work. I want to be a part of that because it has such huge implications for everybody who's donated in the past, you know, to help those people be off the, those rejection drugs. It's, it's really exciting. In a bed at UCLA, a machine sucks blood from Dylan's body. His white blood cells are then separated out and cryopreserved. Does it feel surreal that you're finally here at it's this strange. moment? It's super weird. It's a, it's, it's been a long journey to it. And now that we're doing it, I'm like, all right, finally. A decade of worry, despair, seizures, surgery, and medication, now potentially almost in the rear view. It's like terrifying, obviously, because you, you watch this young person super, like just being super sick, and you you think about that, and you, it's, it's really hard. Micah, meantime, is going through radiation and powerful drugs, and will then have Dylan's stem cells transferred into his body. And now, a waiting game. A month goes by, and now the moment of truth. Dr. Veal will find out if there's engraftment in Micah's body and whether he'll actually start producing Dylan's white blood cells and will recognize the kidney as his own. Yeah, it's a big day. I mean, it's the first time ever done in the history of the planet. It's only taken 10 years of our teams, about 50 people, 10 years to do it. They'll never get that time back <laughs> if it doesn't work. Dr. Veal hopes the procedure is a success and then opens the door to a world of new possibilities for all kinds of transplant patients. Okay, the report just came in. Let's click and see if we got tolerance. Come on, Micah, hope you engrafted. Ah, uh, yes, guys, we got tolerance. <laughs> About a quarter of Micah's blood, now his brother sells. A measure of success that seems to surprise even the engineer of this breakthrough. Rebecca, we did it, damn it. 
Can you believe that? This is fantastic. Like, can you believe it? We did it. What a damn team. I'm so thrilled. Doctors make many calls to break news, but few are as exciting as this one. It worked, Micah. We did it, man. We got chimerism? We got, <laughs> we got chimerism. We got a graph of it, man. We did it. Micah and Melissa now planning to get married and live a life free of another transplant and without medication. The outlook is good. Yes, very much so. I do feel for you. I think we're in a pretty good place right now, actually. We're in a very good place. We're still on, you know, on the train, yeah, we're going. Start, starting the taper of the last drug. That's kind of cool. For 77-year-old Bill Gallio. Here's the little devil. That's Prednisone. The thought of life without medicine hardly seemed possible. Did you ever think you'd see a day where you might get off your medication and have a healthy kidney? No. Sometimes an experiment exceeds the wildest dreams. Opens it up to people who had a transplant a year ago, two years ago. Yeah, this is so rad. Let's wean them off of immune suppression. Can't thank you and the team enough. Um, really appreciate it. Okay, see you buddy, bye, bye. Yeah, they're over the moon. They said these are super clean results. Wow. So it's really groundbreaking. It's the first of its kind anywhere in the world, and it was such a privilege to be able to go along on that journey. Yeah, and yeah. watch it be successful. Even watching the doctor get that phone call and react, it's amazing to all that research leading to this moment that changed his it life is. forever. And, and so for many patients other. whose yeah. lives have changed forever, too. Oh, my goodness. So, this is amazing. Yeah, right after the break, Dr. Beal joins us live in studio to discuss how he's feeling about his accomplishment and what this can mean in the bigger picture for all kinds of transplant recipients. It's a big day. I mean, it's the first time ever done in the history of the planet. It's only taken 10 years of our teams, about 50 people, 10 years to do it. Well, we just introduced you to Dr. Jeffrey Beal and took you behind the curtain as he performed the first of its kind medical procedure. It takes a village to do what these UCLA doctors did and will no doubt change countless lives. And we're joined now in studio live by Dr. Beal. He's a professor at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA and the director of the UCLA Kidney Transplantation Exchange Program. We're so happy to have you. And first of all, thank you for letting me come along for the ride. Arudabe, thank you. I mean, that segment was Perfect. Just <laughs> if you guys could just play that on loop. Okay, uh, well maybe thanks. we can we can figure out how to do that. that was so great. obviously these medical terms they sound really complicated, mm -hmm. right? But this is really really life changing for anyone who's had a kidney transplant and potentially any kind of organ transplant. Yeah, I mean they're on these immunosuppression meds, so it's it's glorious for them if they can come off of these medications because these anti-rejection or immunosuppression medications, they're nasty things. So they can cause cancer, heart disease, diabetes, infections. But if you get the donor's stem cells, so the same donor that donated the kidney transplant, if you can ask that same donor to then donate their stem cells, and if those stem cells engraft, then the recipient can come off these medications. And also, another thing I learned just reporting this story that I wasn't aware of is that the actual drugs that allow the organ to be transplanted and survive in the body can kill the organ and then you need another transplant. Yeah, ironically, you're taking these medications to uh, prevent the organ from getting rejected, but those same medications are harmful to the organ. So uh, they choke out the kidney. So over time, they're preventing the kidney from rejecting, the kidney transplant from rejecting, but at the same time, they're toxic to the kidney. So a kidney transplant typically only functions for about 15 years, 20 years. Uh, so by doing this, theoretically, their kidney transplant should last for the rest of the recipient's life because they're not on those medications anymore. It's, it's a really big deal, and I know this was really suspenseful. I mean, there was so much money and time and cooperation from patients that went into this. How are you feeling now? Oh, I mean, outstanding because uh, you don't know going into it if it's going to work. And then, like I said in the clip, it's like we'll never get that time back. It's like you invest 10 years on one thing. It's like an Olympic athlete or something like that. They train for 10 years and then they maybe trip on the hurdle and you don't do it. And so that's kind of what our team did. We went down the road hoping it would work. And yeah, it worked. Beautiful chimerism, beautiful engraftment. And Micah is about to come off his last little bit of medication. He's on 0.5 milligram of a dose a tacrolimnus. He's almost off. He'll be off all his meds next month and then he'll be free just like you and me. It's incredible. And I mean, it took their cooperation too because they didn't know if it was going to work. They trusted you. Absolutely. And his brother Dylan, who donated a kidney to him over a year ago, 
we had to call Dylan back and say, hey, the kidney was great, but how about you donate your stem cells? Yeah. And so we had to put Dylan through a donor stem cell. Uh, he had to take these powerful drugs, get his stem cell donation. Um, so it's a lot on the donor to come back again over a year later and then donate the stem cells. And not um, only that, he got COVID when he came back the second time. That part didn't make it into the story, but when yeah. he came all the way from the East Coast uh, to do this, he was on the drugs, he gets COVID, he gets sequestered in a hotel room, has to go back and come back again. So it's a really big journey for these yeah. people. Yeah, so kudos to Dylan. Um, he not only donated his kidney, but he also donated his stem cells to his brother. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, and they took a chance. Like you said, they took a risk on the whole thing and it worked. So what now? Are you working on other patients? Uh, this is obviously not available everywhere in the country for people who see this, who have had a transplant or are getting a transplant who want this. Right. This is only available right now for people who have had a kidney transplant from a well-matched brother or sister. So if you're walking around right now with a kidney transplant and it was your brother or it was your sister that donated a kidney to you, you could then ask that same brother or sister to come back and donate their stem cells. Uh, we just did another patient and it was four years ago. So it was wow. a gentleman whose sister donated a kidney to him four years ago. They went through this about two months ago. Uh, so the sister came back four years later, donated her stem cells, and we should find out if they have engraftment in another week. So you're off to the races. You're off and running. We're, we're rolling. Well, we appreciate uh, getting to ride along with you on this oh, journey. Man. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, KCAL, CBS, Ruta Bay. Thanks for getting the word out. We appreciate your time, and thanks for coming in this morning. And if you'd like to learn more about the program, check out our website, kcalnews.com, and click Scene on TV. Let's get a check on our next weather forecast now with meteorologist.